They said, um, what is your secret of miracles? And I said, if I told you, it wouldn't be secret anymore. <laughs> I'd lose it. Uh, there is no secret. Uh, there's no secret. Uh, it's just... It's just an awareness. I can walk into a meeting and, and just come in on a Sunday morning and look. And I, I just see someone. I know that's his day or her day for a miracle. And sometimes I get them to move, move the people to a place where I can get easily to them. Now, how do I know? I know. Um, and, and when you know... You know. And if you can see into the invisible, it helps. But how do you explain to someone who doesn't see what seeing is? How do you explain the different tones of blue sky to a person with no eyes? How do you explain you can't. Uh, them that knows, knows. And if you don't know, you don't know. And you need to get born again. Uh, that's it. And once you're born again, it's easy. Uh, that's why I wrote a book. It's so easy. Because really, Christianity is easy for those that see and know. And evangelism's easy. Uh, think about it. We're going to look at it. Uh, Paul declared that the source of evangelism was God. And those undertaking it are empowered by his spirit. That's Acts 1.8. Um, you know, it's God who does it. Let me tell you something. Without miracles, you have nothing. And um, think of this. Jesus had the multitudes come out because they heard about the miracles. He got a crowd without music. He got a crowd without gimmicks. And believe it or not, we get a crowd here. And every Sunday, people come from all over. The reason they come from all over and they fly in from Europe, they fly in from America, they know they can get a miracle. Miracles bring people. It's easy to build a crowd. When I go to places like Cameroon, I was in Ghana, Kumasi a few months ago, uh, it just takes one miracle and the crowds rush and, and you know it, it spreads like wildfire because miracles are easy. He does them. Uh, and you if you've got a church where you have problem getting people in, it's just because you haven't got miracles. A miracle a day keeps the devil away. You have to have miracles. No miracles, no Jesus. Is that plain? And so I just expect miracles. And because I expect God to do what he does, he does what he does. Because he do. And it's easy. Uh, and if I was one of these people that was religious and thought that, well, you know, it's just a matter of persuading people. No. That's not what counts. What counts is God doing it. Evangelism is a descriptive term for the activity of making known in the power of the Holy Spirit the good news of God's salvation. When you want to let people know about salvation and redemption, we redeem body, soul and spirit. When I get up to preach, I take Bible stories and usually I just... I'm talking in Africa or, or South America. I'll just take a simple Bible story and just talk. 
I don't spend a long time trying to do a three-point landing. I just talk. The Bible story. Jesus sat down and talked. And if you're going to teach people, you need to make it in simple language. And you need to use life illustration. And you need to have the goods to perform what you say. And if you can't do it, in simplicity then you make the whole thing complicated and it isn't complicated nothing's complicated in Christ I, and I find you know you take any story and there's such beauty in scripture it's not merely proclaiming the message it's being the message a total way of life It's amazing when I was, whenever I, I, I travel, you know, people like the woman in the car park outside Walmart's. Hey, you are the message. And you've got to understand it's not proclaiming the message, it's being the person. You know something, the church is not a democracy, the church is a theocracy. And you have to have a man of God called of God, sent of God, with the power of God. And otherwise you don't have a church. And when that man dies, what do you do? Well, you bury him. That's what you do. But you'll never reproduce ministry. And I find too many people are trying to reproduce or hand it down to their family. You know, it becomes a family business. Uh, you can hand a butcher's shop down, uh, but you can't, you can't hand ministry down. Uh, my son and my daughter, they're in the church. Well, my two daughters are in the church, and my son is in the church. I told him he'd go into the ministry over my dead body. People have said to me, well, don't, don't, don't you think you should groom up your son? Not at all. Now, if God calls him, God better call him and equip him, but I won't give him any help. Uh, why? It's not a family business. Would to God that pastors learn that it's not something they can, you know, we're not in the old Levitical priesthood where you kind of pass it down. Uh, and if you see churches like that, avoid them like the plague. Because it is a plague. Is that plain? No, I, I don't ever want to mislead people. My friend, um, Archbishop Ben Snederhose, he's gone home to be with the Lord. We traveled the world together. We saw tremendous miracles everywhere we went. Part of what we were. But... When he went home to be with the Lord, uh, he went home. Now I tell you something, no one can take his place. Now that God might write, raise up someone else, but it won't be Benson Ederhoser, man of faith. Uh, and God raised up people, he raised up a Wigglesworth, but there weren't two Wigglesworths. He raised up a, an Amy Semple McPherson. He raised up a Catherine Coleman. He raised up an Oral Roberts. He raised up a T.L. He, he raises men up. When they're gone, they're gone. Amen.